In this episode, we're talking about the Jedi Force Beer Tap. It's a beer tap that you control with the Force. It's got this undulating lights, it's got an infinity mirror. Put your cup in, use the Force to dispense your beer. Stay tuned, we're going to talk about all the details. If you're a Star Wars fan, then this is the project you're looking for. We're going to talk about all the details, but first let's watch it in action. I'm going to plug it in, give it a little juice. It's booting up. It's a particle photon IoT device. Once it boots up, plays a little intro music. That's a cantina song. It's got this oscillating light. It's waiting for somebody to come up with a, uh, a glass that wants to dispense beer. And you put the glass in there. It changes modes. The colors change. The saber lights up. It's waiting for me to apply the force before it dispenses. Put my hand out here. It dispenses. Pull away. And then it resets. Pretty much does the same thing every time you do it, except it changes the taunts. And if it doesn't like where your hand is and the force isn't just right, it'll ridicule you basically. So it was a lot of fun bringing this all together. There's a lot of different elements that were tricky about the infinity mirror, about the uh, the base, about the module in the back, and specifically about the linear actuator. So this project is about a year old and should have been done about nine months ago, but because of my relocation across America and all that backstory, you know, it was a pain in the ass and it slipped. The timeline slipped entirely. I apologize for that, but the nice people at Actuarium sent me over this. 30 millimeter actuator and I really want to put it to use because it's a high quality servo actuator that uh, they have lots of other devices and this is just one of their smaller units. Um, so let's check it out. Let's spin it around and talk about some of the technical aspects of it. If you look at this base, it's got a white Delrin uh, Rebel Force uh, logo in, uh, laser cut into the front. And then it's got laser engraved saying that do or do not, there is no try in the bottom. All the wires from those components along with the RGB ring come through the back and they come up through the backside. Now this irregular shape is basically a wiring harness and wiring loom. So there's modules down here, the wires all come up between the layers of the laser cut foam core and they go up to this module here which is where the force is detected. We're using a grid eye, a 64 pixel component that can read infrared, basically like a little mini FLIR module and we use that information to determine what the force is for dispensing the beer. This box right here is 3D printed, laser engraved and this is where the photon lives along with the motor driver, mp3 player, and other things necessary to make this all come together. On the right hand side, this little guy down here is the little 30 millimeter linear actuator. And then I had to invent this little suspension absorber thing to allow for drunk people to still pull it and without breaking the linear actuator. And so I'm not sure if there's a name for this. I just kind of invented it to make it work for me. Um, when the linear actuator pushes, it applies force to that and that and that pushes it out based on the amount of force in, in the person that's requesting the beer and all that fun stuff. So we've got uh, about 150 RGB LEDs in this bottom section in the infinity mirror and it's a multi-layer acrylic panel with laser cut graphics on the middle layer. The Sabre itself uh, has about 60 RGB LEDs at uh, I think 120 per meter. Um, so they're very closely packed in there and so the resolution is really cool. It has like a flickering flame effect. I don't think you could see that on camera, but we'll get a shot of that. 
a little bit later in the assembly process. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, but to do this, I reached out to a friend of mine, a fellow content creator, uh, Winston Moy, uh, who has a channel called Winston Makes. Um, he's also into STEM technologies. He uses a lot of the same machinery. He uses Shapeoko uh, machines for CNC milling. And he actually made this hill for me. I reached out and said, hey, I, I could really use your help. Are you interested in helping out with this? And he said, sure. And he came in way under timeline and I've been trying to catch up ever since. Um, but he milled this. Um, um, and he's covered all the details on his channel and you'll have to go over and check it out to see how he pulled that together. He's got about six different types of wood. The grains go in various directions. There's hollow cavities in here where the electronics are hosted and all the wiring comes back out through this bracket where the push rod is connected to the hill. And you can see all that, but if you wanna see the inside scoop and how to do it yourself, then you'll have to head over to his channel and check that out. In this episode, I'm gonna be talking about the back plane, how I brought the whole project together. He handed me this hilt and said, hey, you're good to go. I had to do all the electronics and incorporate it into the back plane and all of the other sub-assemblies and whatnot. So let's talk about that. But before we do that, we're gonna jump over to the computer and look through Fusion 360 cuts because that's where all of this was designed. Um, and I designed it all out and create all the parts before we start cutting anything. So let's hop over and talk about that. So here we are in Fusion 360 looking at the full assembly of the Jedi Force beer tap. So you, as you can see, there are no missing parts. I designed the full assembly in Fusion 360, which allows me to troubleshoot any electromechanical or range of motion issues prior to uh, creating anything. It's much easier to fix it in here than it is to remill it on the machine. So that said, let's isolate the backplane 18 millimeter cast acrylic. Basically have three operations that we're performing. We have this pocket, which is where the infinity mirror effect goes, which has three 1 8 inch acrylic sheets in there. One is a mirror, the middle one is the art, and the top one is the two-way mirror. And we also had to create slots to drop in the RGB strip, and those are milled in from the back side. You can see that there's these slots here that allow us to drop the RGB right down in there, and then we can wire it on the back side. On the front side, the acrylic is uh, covering that. Uh, other operations we did was a contour around the outside, which is just uh, using a quarter-inch flat end mill, and then we drilled out those two millimeter holes, which is how we mount all of the acrylic sheets for the infinity effect. Uh, there are a few other holes. This large one is for the beer tap and this little one is for the linkage that comes through to control the beer tap and this little square guy over here is for the grid eye which is the 64 pixel infrared sensor it is countersunk from the back side to allow that module to be surface flush and it needs to be flush so that we don't get an aperture effect or clip the visibility of from that sensor. So I had to countersink it down about 16 millimeters within the material. That said, let's look at the art and the two-way mirror. Look at the mirror, infinity art, and two-way mirror. Isolate those guys. If we look at those, it's all pretty straightforward. They are all three of the same profile. So we can mill those all from the same tool path. And the only difference is that the center 1 8 inch piece is clear acrylic and it has the infinity art on it. The art was laser engraved. So once I had all three of these cut out, the two-way mirror, the back mirror, and the, and the cast clear acrylic, uh, I took that clear acrylic over to the laser and engraved the artwork. Um, to do that, it's difficult to, to get the registration the same on irregular shaped objects on the laser. So what I did is I basically scribed the outline on the laser platform and that gave me a, a a means to place the acrylic in the laser and then once it was placed it just scanned out all of these uh, graphics directly on this irregular shape. Now let's hop over to the machines and run through some of the video that I have of those processes. You underestimate the power of the dark side. If you will not fight, then you will meet your destiny. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Once we had the back plane and all the acrylic milled and laser engraved, we were ready to assemble that. So with 
the back plane and the infinity mirror assembled, I had to create the base, which was a three part assembly. Let's walk through that in Fusion and then mill this thing out. Okay, back in Fusion 360, we have the full assembly. We see the back plane that looks almost identical to the finished product. And let's isolate the foot now because that was the next thing that we had to accomplish. The foot, the base, and the pad. Let's isolate that. Looking at that, it's really uh, pretty simple in design. The base is a 18 millimeter black acrylic, same material used as the back plane. It's got a pocket cut that allows the back plane to slide right down in it. So there's nothing really tricky about that. Simple pocket and a contour cut on that. So let's hide that for now. And then uh, we have the base, which is made out of wood, which goes on top of the black acrylic. The only thing tricky about this is I did some layout on this that has the letters here, and that letter is laser engraved. I used this to do the layout so that it's um, centered correctly on the component itself, and I export as DXF and RD works and scan that into the laser. Same applies for the Rebel Base uh, logo on the pad, which is made of white Delrin. That's also laser engraved, and we did that all in one shot, the pad and the foot assembly. The tricky part, if we hide the wood piece, is that the white Delrin actually had some complexity to it on the bottom side. You can't really see it, uh, but that's where the RGB ring is, and the RGB ring was responsible for holding that ring of light in there as well as the time of flight sensor. Time of flight sensor has a through hole because that's the beam that gets broken when you put a glass over the pad. Um, all of the wiring for that so that the time of flight sensor is I2C and the RGB ring has three wires. All those wires come right out the back side and then are routed through the footer um, to the back side of the back plane. So if we unisolate all those you can see that the wires come through this hole on the back plane directly through that channel. A little bit complexity there, but it, um, nothing that's unmanageable. Let's mill out the foot and the base and the uh, Delrin pad. Get this base assembled to the back plane. So now that we have the base completed and the back plane assembled and we put those things together, um, it was time to move on to some of the bigger challenges that I knew I was gonna face. And one of which was the linear actuator and how I was gonna set up the linkage so that it had sufficient axial give in the case that it was over pouring, maybe there's too much force or maybe somebody just wants to pull it and pour their own uh, beer without using the force. So in that regard, you know, I need to come up with a linkage that had this ability to adjust and allow the user to override the system, if you will. Um, and so this was all 3D printed and designed in Fusion 360, as well as the levers and the enclosure and the little bearing race and assembly. Um, so let's go back into Fusion 360. I'll show you what this looks like and then 3D print it and show you the final assembly. Okay, here we are back in Fusion 360. Now what we're gonna do is rotate this around and isolate the assembly, the linkage assembly, as it relates to the beer tap and the uh, lightsaber hilt. So we have a selection set for that. We can select that and isolate that pretty quickly. Now all we have selected and displayed are the linear actuator assembly um, and the push rods connectors to the levers and the hilt. So you can see basically as it was designed, the linear actuator is connected to this cage. The cage has a slider inside it. This cage is permanently fixed to the linear actuator push rod. And then at the end of this cage, there's a threaded shaft that goes into it and connects to the slider. There are springs on either side of that, and so by the linear actuator extending its push rod, it increases or decreases pressure against the spring so that the user can at any time pull the hilt, which engages the levers and then will allow for a throw of one inch in either direction so that the user can either stop a pour or increase a pour or do whatever they want. They don't have to rely on the actuator for actually controlling this device. 
the actuator is just there as a as a novelty to implement the force but it's not necessarily required uh, if I didn't incorporate this into the linkage then there would be no way to control the beer tap with the linear actuator connected to the linkage so that's it that's all this was all 3d printed uh, ex with the exception of the linear actuator obviously uh, we've got these m3 threaded rods and ends um, that are like RC ends for remote control cars all came together really well and I uh, did some tricky stuff with having a octagonal uh, shaft that prevents them from slipping on both sides so let's get these things 3d printed and I'll show you the final assembly and the functionality of that cage now witness the fire power of this fully armed and operational Battle Station. So with that, we were good to go, at least uh, mechanically, right? So we had the functional tap, we had all the linkage and all of the uh, issues with backlash uh, associated to the linear actuator. We just had to pull some electronics together and make it all work, right, and give it a brain. That's where the particle photon came in. You can go to particle.io to check these guys out. They're pretty capable. They've been around for a while. They're little IoT devices, that cloud-based backend that allow you to integrate, do over-the-air updates, make changes on the fly in real time. So we'll need to make a board to host this and on that board it's going to have to have a few other components. We want to use like a 12 volt power supply that will supply good voltage to all of the RGB LEDs that we have in this that could um, you know chew up some of the amperage. So we'll need about a 2 amp 12 volt power supply but these guys run off of 5 volts and a lot of the other components are all off 5 volts as well. Um, so we'll need a, a power converter, so a, a voltage regulator that will go on that board and then we also have an mp3 player because we're going to be playing music and taunts and things like that. So this has a little onboard amplifier, a little micro SD. It has a, uh, a MP3 player incorporated into the chipset and you can interact with it from the Photon pretty easily. In addition to that, we're, we're going to be using the GridEye sensor, which is the 64 pixel FLIR, if you will, um, infrared module, which will detect the force. And then we also have a time of flight sensor. And this is time of flight, which is near IR technology, essentially. They'll measure distance or the time of flight of that light to hit an object. And so with that, we went to circus.io, designed the board, and then once we get the Gerber files, rather than send it off and have it mill and wait two weeks, we just milled it out on the Nomad 883, which is always a good option uh, to do quick turn, same day, you know, less than an hour to mill the board. So let's um, show you circus.io, the Gerber file, and mill this thing out. So we're almost there. We've got the circuit board milled out. We soldered in all the components. I had the time of flight wired up and the grid eye sensor all wired up. But we just had a cluster of wires in the back and we weren't going to make this look like crap. So we had to do something about it. We had to organize the wires. We had to organize the speaker and how it all was routed. So I created this wire loom or wiring harness which is made with two layers of foam core. I'm fortunate enough to have a laser so I could just laser cut the first layer to have a gap where I could run all my wires and then laser cut a second layer that would cover up all those gaps. And so I just ran through that process. I'll show you what they look like in Fusion 360. Cut them out and then hot melt glued them on the back of this. That made it look nice and clean. 
Lastly, all I needed to do is 3D print a case with then Velcroed on here so I could pop it off and update the uh, MP3 and the Photon or anything else I need to do to get in there. And then I laser engraved the back um, with myself and Winston Moy's name on there because we were both contributors into this. And uh, that's it. So let's kind of run through that process and button this up and then we'll circle back on the entire process. Hang in there, we're almost done. All right, back in Fusion 360, I'm going to show you real quick how I created the wire loom and the wiring harness out of foam core, laser cut them, and we also did a little quick case on the back side of the device. So let's uh, go ahead and isolate those guys. Isolate. Now these are just um, the wiring harness and case. And so essentially it's just two layers of foam core. And I thought this was easy and quick and dirty. So if we look at the first one, we see that it's got a hollow cavity, which is where I run the wires for the individual components from the speaker all down to the central processing area where the main circuit board is. Also run wires from the RGBs and from the motor back down the bottom area over here and run them right up into the circuitry. And then once I've um, attach this to the back side of the unit. Um, I can put all my wires in there, hot melt them how I see fit to make sure that they're no thicker than the uh, 3 16 foam core that I'm using. And then I cut out a second cover, which is the loom cover, which conceals all of those uh, cavities uh, and just leaves the main areas open where the speaker is and where the case attaches. And that makes it pretty straightforward to add this case. Piece of cake, right? Three layers, three objects, and it really cleans up the back side of that. So if I uh, zoom up and then we un-isolate everything, then you'll see really cleans up the back side and conceals all of those wires in that harness. All right, so I'll show you a couple videos of assembling this on the back plane, and then we will wrap this thing up. Alright, so that's it. The product's pretty much finished, right? It looks great from the front, looks great from the side, all the functionalities there, all the sensors are in place, we're good to go, right? Well, not quite, because we've got a computer back here, this little particle photon needs to be programmed. Fortunately, they have an online IDE, and I can take you there and share my screen and show you what kind of logic I had to put on that device to make it do all of this cool stuff. So let's hop up back on the computer, we'll go over to particle.io, check out the IDE, and I'll explain the code to you. All right, so here we are over at the Particle.io IDE, which is Integrated Development Environment. Um, the Particle Photon is a Wi-Fi connected device, which means you can update the firmware and the logic over the internet. You can do that quickly using their browser-based IDE. Pretty straightforward. There's a lot of different libraries that are publicly available for you to include in your projects, or you can create your own and write your own basic logic. Um, so we're including a few libraries here. We use the DF Robot Mini Player, which is the MP3 player. We use the VL53 LOX, which is the time of flight sensor. We also use Fast LED to uh, control and command all of the RGBs in this, this project. We also use the AMG8833, which is the GridEye uh, IR matrix module. Uh, we also use wire because all of these things talk over I2C. And then lastly, we use a finite state machine. So this file by itself has a setup and a loop function, and that setup will be called when the device is turned on, and the loop function will be called indefinitely. Um, and so you could put all that logic in the loop function and just have lots of if-then-else sort of statements, but it gets messy and complex and difficult to manage. So what a finite state machine allows you to do is to define different states. When you define different states, then each of those 
states can have their own loop. It's kind of like multi-threading, but it's really about encapsulation of the logic for a particular context. So, for example, in our product, we have a state in which the device is waiting for a Jedi. And when it's waiting for a Jedi, it does certain activities and has certain color palettes for the RGBs, and it is waiting for you to put a cup under that beer tap. Uh, and so those are the things that uh, waiting for a Jedi state is is interested in listening for. And so we encapsulate all of those in a state that's called seek. I also set up another state that's called sense. So once we found a Jedi, then we want to sense the force. And so we're talking to the AMG uh, 8833 to determine how much force the user is using. And we're also checking to make sure they haven't moved their cups. As we don't want to start pouring beer if they pull their cup out. So things like that. And then there's also reset. So if the user walks away or if they give up or they just fail in general or they've successfully filled their, their cup, then the reset will pull the tap back in so as to prevent the beer from continuing to pour out. So there's different states that this app runs in. And using a finite state machine allows us to encapsulate all that logic. But if you start at the top and you start going down, and you see that all those libraries are added at the top. Also a lot of enumerations, so details about how you set up the RGB lights, little um, indicators and variables that we need to know for how to control the linear actuator, um, what pins to use on the photon, things like that. We define all the color palettes because there's several color palettes. The pad changes colors, the marquee changes colors, uh, as well as the saber changes colors, and it actually has like a fire pattern on it as well. And it, once you've defined all of those attributes, then we jump right into a setup. Setup is called once when you turn on the device, and that's when it does all the initialization. It get, checks all the MP3s, prepares all the audio, prepares all of the palettes in the fast LED and finite state machine, and gets it ready to go. And once it's done with that setup, then it just jumps into this loop. So this loop Loop. Since we're using the finite state machine, it's really only got uh, one or two in interesting things in it. I mean, we're really just calling S FSM update, which is the finite state machine update. And it's basically saying, whatever state you're in, do what you're supposed to do in that state. And since I've defined the states above, then just below this section, I can look at what each of those states are responsible for doing when they're in the particular state. And it makes it easy to transition from one state to another. And anyway, it makes it really easy. If you get into the code, you either understand what this is, or it's something that you should probably investigate if you're interested in learning how to do this. Um, there are a couple logging methods and a few helper methods. These add glitter after you've filled your beer then it, it makes like a sparkle effect on all the RGBs and this is for the time of flight smoothing so we don't if somebody passes their hand under the beer tap we don't want it to start pouring out beer or thinking that there's a Jedi so it waits for some time and it makes sure that there's definitely a cup underneath there so there's some uh, logic like that and lots of little helper things and then you get into these enter seek enter so seek enter is what happens when it's going into the seek state and then we have seek update which is what gets executed when it's seeking and then there's seek exit. If you need to do something when you're leaving that state, then here's where you would do that. So you have the three different seek methods. Now you have the three different sense methods. So we have sense, enter. That's when we set up palettes and we set up um, any type of uh, timing events or variables that need to be configured before we start sensing. And then we have sense update where we perform all of the sensing logic, which is, you know, we're checking the force. We're making sure you didn't pull your glass away. Um, we're going to taunt you if you're not doing well, and we're going to pat your back if you are. And then if you pull your glass away, then we immediately transition to reset. And that's when you see the reset enter where we set some defaults there. And then we do reset update. This is basically telling the linear actuator to go back to your home position because we don't want to spill beer all over the place. This, this guy isn't going to have any force or he just pulled his cup out. And so he's being silly. So let's reset and prepare for the next Jedi. So that said, um, after that last method of the reset exit, then there's just a few other helper files that create palettes dynamically that we can use if I if we choose to in the configuration of any of those other states and I guess that's about it so all said there's about six seven hundred lines of code uh, it took a, a little while to get it all uh, to be smooth and transition and fade between palettes and things like that but I'll put this up on the github so that you can uh, you know explore it and maybe learn something from it and take it and implement it in your Jedi Forest beer tab so that's it, top to bottom, side to side, that's how you make a Jedi Force beer tap.
I don't know what else to explain. If you got any questions, please leave them in the comments below and uh, we'll share up all the files, all the GitHub repo for the source code, um, and I guess sources for any of the materials and components that went into this device. Again, I want to thank Winston Moy for helping contribute on this. He made an awesome hilt. And definitely go check out how he did this. He did some really creative flip jigs and um, there was some, a lot of technical complexity to that. So go check out his channel. Give him a pat on the back and a thumbs up. Also want to thank all of my favorite uh, hardware manufacturers so you know they didn't sponsor this video but hey man Shapoko, Carbide 3D, Nomad 883 they're killing it they're my favorite tools to work with and they allow me to make things like this which is a lot of fun maybe someday I'll get some of those machines for free but for now you know they're worth every cent that I pay for them in addition to Actuonics for providing the linear actuator this they did give to me so that's pretty cool and these actuators are you know a little pricey but they're definitely high quality and they're perfect for lots of jobs. Um, I just need a, a few dozen of these and I'll be making, you know, robots. But, you know, for now, this works. It was a good practical application for a single linear actuator that's 30 millimeters. Not many uh, opportunities to leverage something like that. But anyway, just want to say thanks. This was a great time. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, stay tuned. Uh, there's more stuff to come on the channel. In addition to that, oh yeah, we had a uh, Orlando Make a Fair giveaway and never selected somebody. So we're gonna select somebody. I'm gonna do this random selection process from all the comments. If you've been commenting on that other video, then you're gonna be in the pool. And I'll put the name like right up here or something. But so anyway, email me if you're the winner and we'll get that squared away. Thanks and as always, stay safe, have fun, and I can't wait to see you next time. Hey, if you like the video, please subscribe to the channel. It's how we're building the community. Also, allow me to bring better content. Also, check me out on these other social networks. There's lots of cool stuff there, too. See ya.